This video is all about how to measure specific heat capacity. It's required practical in the P1 topic energy, but in the P3 topic particles, if you are just aware of the practical and the method, and then it will, it will be done as a required practical in the energy topic. The practical can be done with solids or liquids. With solids, you use these metal blocks here. Now they're of different metals, uh, but these are all one kilogram blocks. If you notice, they've got two holes in the top here, and one of the holes is to place a heater in, an immersion heater, and then the smaller hole here is for the thermometer. Before we go any further, can you remember the definition of specific heat capacity and the equation? That will help you have an idea of what you need to measure. So if, if we look at the definition, the amount of energy, so we need to measure energy to raise the temperature. So we need to measure temperature of one kilogram. So we also need to measure mass to find the specific heat capacity of a material. When you are talking about measuring in your write-up for practicals, if, say, for example, you say measure the mass, you also have to say what you're going to use. So the mass will be measured with a balance. So I'm just going to talk about solids. Here is a link for a video to watch uh, describing liquids. So when you're describing the experiment, you need to include the following. The apparatus you would use. Any measurements you need to collect and that will come from your equation. The method you will follow and how you would calculate the specific heat capacity. So always write down the equation when you're talking about practicals in physics. The method, it has to be repeatable and reproducible. So write it as if you are writing a recipe and somebody else can follow that and come up with similar results. So if you'd like to watch the video about liquids now before you go any further with this presentation and then come back to it. OK, here is uh, two pictures showing the practical for solids. This one's like a 3D representation and this one is a more scientific diagram. So if you notice here, you've got a heater and here is the heater on this one here and then the thermometer here and this is representing those blocks that were in a previous slide and this is a cross section. One big difference in the images here and the blocks that were in the previous slide is to do with this reducing wasted heat loss. Okay so what you need to do to prevent heat escaping from the block and being transferred to the surrounding air is insulate the block and that will make your results more accurate and also your calculation of specific heat capacity more accurate as well. Now there are two ways you can do uh, the method. You can either as we've got here, you can measure the voltmeter to measure the volt, the voltage, and the ammeter here to measure the current. And from that, you can find the power. And then once you know the power transfer to the heater, you can work out the energy transfer in a certain time. Now that, at the moment, if you haven't done P1 and P2, will be a bit complicated. So like I said, just an overview of the practical for now. You can also, instead of measuring volts and 
amps you can use a joule meter which will measure the energy transferred from the power supply to the block this isn't a joule meter here this is actually just showing an ammeter so if you just measure the energy transferred then you don't have to do all these cal calculations of volts and amps however in the GCSE exam you will get a mixed question on all different topics so it might very well be a mixture of um, electricity a mixture of energy and a mixture of particles in the question now coming back to this what are the variables and risks okay variables what are we changing we're investigating the specific heat capacity of different materials so this block here is what you're going to change what about the risk well the heater it's just a metal rod and it gets really really hot so that is dangerous so the heater gets very hot be careful that you don't burn yourself so this slide here shows a method written down step by step including here those calculations here as talking about p for power volts current i is for current and then once you've worked that out you can work the energy by multiplying the power by the time if you just read through this method and make sure you're familiar with it if you've looked at the video on uh, the experiment with liquids this is one of the um, slides towards the end uh, which gives you an idea of sources of inaccuracy where you can make mistakes and they also apply to solids as well for example thermal energy as I discussed earlier not all the energy will be contained in the solid or the liquid so you need to insulate it so on this one here it's insulating around the beaker because you'll have a liquid in a beaker um, and for the solid you would put insulation around the solid another mistake you can do is not read the thermometer correctly so a more accurate uh, measurement you would get using an electronic temperature probe this final slide has got a more detailed method and a diagram for you to read